WQAD News 8, this is WQAD This Week. Good morning, it's Sunday, April 23rd. Thank you for joining us for News 8 This Week. I'm John Diaz. This week, communities across the country are honoring the Days of Remembrance of the Victims of the Holocaust. Later today, Augustana College will host an event featuring Dr. Ralph Troll, Professor Emeritus at Augustana, a U.S. Army veteran and a survivor of Nazi persecution. Our program today will focus on hearing his story and the message of perseverance he hopes to share. Ralph, thanks so much for taking the time to talk with us this week. Um, there is so much about your life that I want to ask you about, and we're going to get to it uh, during this interview. But um, first, tell me who you are and a little bit about your time at Augustana College. Oh, okay. I um, got my... After service, I went to use the GI Bill to attend the University of Illinois, and that's where I met my wife. And I got my bachelor's degree and master's degree there. Then I went to the University of Arizona. Well, we both did. We got married then. We went there, and I was going to do my PhD program there. But my son was born, and we came back to Illinois. And I needed a job. So I took out a book called Colleges and Universities of the United States. And I looked in Illinois. Augustana was near the top. And I said, why not give it a shot? And so I wrote him, it was Dean Arbo at the time. And I said, who I am and what I've done and I'm looking for a teaching position. And he says, as a matter of fact, we have an opening. Uh, you don't need to come in for an interview because our president, President Bergendorf at the time, is going to be in Phoenix at such and such a time, and we were still in Tucson. And so I met him there, and he interviewed me, and uh, a few weeks later, I got the position. And I started in 59, and then 61, 2, I think, I took a year off, went to Minnesota because it was much more convenient, and continued my PhD program there, and then just took summers. And I finally got the degree while I was still going to Augie, or teaching at Augie, mm -hmm. uh, in 65. And you were there for 40 years. Yep. I want to ask you a little bit about what it was like. Um, and perhaps let's start with maybe some positive memories, if you have some. Oh, sure. Of what it was like to be a young boy in Germany in the 30s. Okay. Um, we lived in a, in a small suburb of a place called Darmstadt. Uh, you know, my mom was Jewish. My dad was Catholic. Uh, dad was a chemist in one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in Germany that was located in Darmstadt. And uh, we, we lived in that place for about six years. And I grew up as a normal kid, uh, no problems. Um, but the things were getting really bad over there. Uh, Jews were being arrested all over the country and sent to concentration camps. And so my, my parents made the decision to move. And so in 38, we, uh, uh, they bought a very secluded old house out in the country. And uh, we moved there. And uh, it was like we had five acres of land with it and a barn and so on. It was really nice. And... Uh, my mom was safe. Uh, she never went into town or anywhere else until 1945. And so, and in 41, my sister was born. And, uh, well, that year, Allied bombers were already flying over Germany, and by 1943, the air raids became pretty common. In fact, my, my dad built cots in the cellar, I mean cellar, not a finished basement. And every night was spent there. It was, it was our bedroom. And then during the day, I would 
often spend hours in, in well, I'd call them reinforced foxholes that had been built by the Nazis on the property well before we moved there. Hmm. This, this was an even flat area about 10 miles from the Rhine, so they knew something was happening. And I would spend there and watch Allied bombers flew overhead by the hundreds, just, you know. And uh, we, we weren't afraid. We, we, in fact, we were hoping the Allies would stop Hitler's madness. That, that was the main thing. And then um, in February 12th, I'll never forget the day, 1945, several Gestapo members stormed into our house in the middle of the night. I mean, they couldn't do it in the day. Middle of the night and arrested our mom. Her crime, being a Jew. I simply took her, no hugs, no kisses, no goodbyes. It was a few weeks later that my dad got a correspondence from the mayor of the small town, nearby town. And uh, it, it simply states her name, the date of her arrest, the fact that she was taken to Gestapo prison in Darmstadt and then transported to Theresienstadt, which turned out to be a concentration camp in Czechoslovakia. And we found out later that was a horrible five-day trip in a crowded cattle car, cattle car, all the way to Czechoslovakia. And of course, fortunately, it was a work camp, not a death camp, but conditions apparently were just terrible. I mean, there were 16 people were crowded into two tiny rooms. Uh, insect infestation was severe. Uh, typhus was prevalent. And the, the work routine was just terrible. And I was 12 years old at that time. What is going through the mind of a 12-year-old at that time? Fear but hope. You thought you would see your mother again? Yes, I was hoping, yes, yes. And so now it was just dad and my, my sister Mary Ann and I, and then things got so bad over there, dad was concerned. I mean, my sister was almost four at that time, and uh, so he made arrangements with a family in another town to take care of her. And so she was gone, so then Dad and I were alone, and he had to continue working. And, but as we got closer to the end of the war, um, Dad spent more and more time at home. I mean, it was just ridiculous. But then, it, it, things were so chaotic, uh, Dad and I would often uh, feed and hide, usually for a night or so, escaped prisoners of war, mainly Russians and Poles. Uh, just wanders all over the place, and even, I tell you that, occasional deserters from the German army. And this created some pretense situations, but everything worked out well, really. Uh, no one ever found out, or if they did, they didn't tell. But one morning, I remember, uh, German soldiers arrived at our place and forced Dad and me to leave. And the reason they, the, the reason they gave was since the place was located on a hill, they were going to use the site to defend the whole area against Allied troops. But the Germans were forced out very soon thereafter. And the American soldiers, oh, they stayed at our place for maybe two days. And it's kind of neat what they did. They collected all weapons from local citizens. And they handed out candy and chewing gum to the kids. And you know what? It was my first taste of chewing gum ever. I consider it a sign of a better life. Wow. Because very soon after that, we picked up our, my sister 
good to have her home. And on May 10th, 1945, the concentration camp Theresienstadt was liberated by the Russian army and the surviving inmates, most of whom were in very poor health, were taken to various farms to recuperate that was handled by some organization, and I don't know who. But among them was our mom, and she returned, and we were back together by the end of June 45, and immediately began man making plans to immigrate to the United States. And then about a little over a year later, August 46, yeah, everything was in order, you know, a lot of paperwork and stuff. And uh, then leaving everything behind, my favorite books and everything, except for the few necessities, you know, that we carried in a couple of suitcases. We traveled by train to Bremerhaven in northwestern Germany near the ocean, where we spent five months in a refugee camp with hundreds of others waiting for a ship to take us to America. And the wait was over on January 3rd, 1947, day that I will never forget. I imagine that. We boarded troop ship called the USS Ernie Pyle. I remember the ship was very crowded. All the males and females were separated so that my mom and sister ended up one part of the ship, dad and I in another. And the normal, what they told us, nine day voyage lasted 13 days because of a severe storm in the Atlantic. I swear to learned what seasickness was. Mm -hmm. And Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island greeted us on January 16th, 1947. Never forget it. Then after a week in New York, we settled in Chicago. I was now 14 years old, ready to embark on a new life. I didn't speak any English, didn't understand any English. I did pick up a couple of swear words at the ship. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, a look at your forecast and the rest of our conversation with Dr. Ralph Troll. <laughs> 